actually our startup music, so the next person will have ours. <laughs> I'm Charlie from Smarter Sorting. We're a technology company that takes an extremely expensive and environmentally hazardous waste stream. Using our technology, we can sort it into bins of commodities that we sell to reuse to businesses with existing demand. We, between the US and Canada, we can take 700,000 tons of HHW and divert 300,000 tons of it into reuse. So these are the products I'm talking about, household hazardous waste. It's paints, cleaners, fertilizers, pesticides. We don't know how to buy them, we don't know how to use them. We don't necessarily know how to dispose of them. You're supposed to take them to a facility like this. Austin Resource Recovery is one of hundreds of facilities that handle special waste across the US and Canada. Uh, all told, they collect about 700,000 tons, and 500,000 tons are sent to the incinerator which is fantastic. The reason is we have a sorting problem. So they sort all the items by looking at it, which is not the best solution. Uh, we think computers are better at doing this. As a result of this sorting problem, problem we end up with bins that look like this. Just a bunch, bunch of mixed waste, has no reuse value. The only thing you can do is send it to the incinerator, which is really expensive for cities and expensive for taxpayers. We have a better way to do it, and we kind of think it's the only way to do it. So we have a patent pending process that combines hardware and software to scan all of these items at the point of collection. We create a data record that has the chemical composition, the shipping regulations, all we need to, to sort them into bins of commodities that can be diverted to end markets. Something magical happens here. Now we have bins of mixed waste that have to be incinerated. By sorting them, they turn into products which are much easier to ship and much easier to place. We generate revenue in a few ways. We'll talk about the two main ones. So currently cities pay haulers to ship stuff to the incinerator. We will charge a rate 10 to 15% less to divert it to reuse. For the buyer, we have a similar proposition. We'll be giving them the same chemicals they use today, but we'll charge them 75% less. Austin currently diverts 42% of its HHW to reuse. This is a good rate nationally, but they've been hovering around that for a few years now. As soon as they engage us, they can improve their reuse and lower their costs. We believe that 80% diversion of HHW is an achievable future. We have some traction, so we've had a pilot in Austin, we've documented over 10,000 items. We also have letters of intent from Portland Metro and the region of Peel in Ontario. They're the leaders in their respective countries. My partner Chris is at a conference in Portland and he signed up about three or four other cities over the past 24 hours. We also have a statement of work with Stericycle, which is a $10 billion waste company, we're helping them divert latex paint. We have a great team for this, of engineers, designers, researchers. We also have advisors in every sector of tech and waste that we need be successful. We also work with the Austin Technology Incubator, which we're very excited about. We raised money before. It went into building working prototypes of our hardware and software, business development, discovery to understand what we're doing. Uh, we're raising an additional $1.2 million now. It's going to go into perfecting our software and building out the sales cycles on both sides. It's us. <laughs> Great, thank you so much, Charlie. We'll open it up uh, to questions from the judges. What is your sales cycle like with municipalities? And do they have to go out? Does it have to go out to a bid or anything? Right. So we have a golden wedge, which is currently waste companies bid on disposal. So if Clean Harbors or Sarah Cycle holds a disposal contract, often they're about three to four to five years. But we're bidding on reuse, and this is something we're going through with Austin to bid on their oil-based paint outlet stream. And because we're bidding on reuse, they can hold their disposal contract and we can hold a reuse contract. They coexist. Simply everything that can go into reuse will take first. So we're currently bidding on oil-based paint. We believe the turnaround is 60 to 120 days for each cycle. In terms of getting into these facilities, the startup's kind of easy because we're the sole provider of this service. So we'll be bidding in order to have our hardware and software operating and we won't charge any facilities to start up. What is, so what is your, as you, how do you scale? As you go into a new market, what is the um, infrastructure needed in order to, like, what are you actually doing? Are you guys have a super sorting facility? No, we're sorting at the, at the special waste depots where they already collect they already exist. Okay. And we have a very simple hardware. It's like, imagine a Rubbermaid cart that has a scale and multiple scanners. And you place the item, it's like a shopping cart, you know, a, shop, a supermarket checkout reverse. And so it's easy to operate for a facility such as Austin. You need only one of these, and they cost about five or six thousand dollars. And uh, it's very easy to start up. Hey, Charlie, what's your accuracy like? We've run multiple tests, and we take all of these items, and sometimes you get a Tupperware container filled with, you know, green ooze or laughing cow cream cheese. And uh, even counting those items, we're able to successfully scan eighty-three to ninety percent of all of these items. 
Can you tell us more about your business model? You, you are selling uh, the service or you are selling the technology? We're not selling the technology. Uh, the two main revenue streams are in the same way Veolia would get uh, paid to haul waste, we will get paid um, by the cities. And then for all of the commodities we're able to sort out, we'll then sell it to reuse. And to make an important point here, we're not going to be hoteling any of this waste. We're making, we're setting up the buyers first so that we always have an end point to connect. So when you uh, do kind of get these uh, scanned and you think you, you want the product, do you at that point take custody of it and then you just have to ship it? Do you, would you find cases where you're kind of stuck with material that you think you wanted? We'll only take stuff that we know we can ship. Uh, and so we've spoken to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. They said that our positive identification process is enough to reclassify something from waste to product. And now we're just shipping these items with you know, a UPS freight or another type of hauler that can handle shipping bleach. Uh, and so then the product will become the property and liability of the end market. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Charlie. We're, we're out of time.